I'm still looking for a new dry suit. We've got our, <laughs> my messages. Seems to be an ongoing thing. thing. Every time I find one, they're sold out. Or um, they don't make them for uh, middle-aged women that are short and a little more round than they were initially. Yeah, uh, they I well they do custom size because I know a lot of people just prefer custom size because all the normal size we still custom size. Uh, That's called I cat, know. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is expensive, right? You pay like There's three hundred dollars because it's custom. Um, I, yeah, are a bit cheaper. Palm. Yeah. And it's UK. Yeah, it's from UK. There's another one that. Uh, yeah, level six sulkist, sulk, uh, sulk level six sulkist. Yeah, but they don't do custom, right? No, they don't. They yeah. Don't. That puts me back in the uh, bag I've been wearing uh, for was wearing for kiteboarding back in the late 80s, early 90s, and it's still going strong. I've only ever had to replace the neck, but it's just a big vinyl, polyvinyl bag. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think the dry suit. Sounds, yeah, that's, it's that's a good name, anyway. Uh, Barb had that two years Man. ago. The vinyl thing, but you end up sweating in it a lot. Yeah, it was great for steep creaking, but but you sweat a lot and doggone if you have to get out of it to go to the washroom. Yeah. You know, you're in there the entire day. You are in there the entire day. So. I've had a Kolkata dry suit now for, uh, since 2015 and it was the best investment I ever bought. Yes, it is. Really extends yeah. your season. <laughs> And you, and I will, you have a healthy I'll appreciation talk. of it when you actually uh, dump in ice cold water. You realize uh, how important it is. Yeah. Well, it extends your yeah. season, right? Because you can start in yeah. arch, and when the ice is still floating, you're you're on the river, and there's no issue concern. And the same thing in October, like you know, most people pack up after Labor Day, but yeah. all the way. We we've gone to mid November. But uh, it just extends your season. So two months either side. I purchased a, I purchased a dry suit this past um, year to do an Arctic trip that got canceled due to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, what are folks doing when you make camp and it happens to be raining? Do you keep wearing the dry suit or do folks typically bring uh, traditional rain gear? We have a tarp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rain gear and a tarp. <laughs> yeah. We, the first thing when we get to the campsite, it's the tarp right away. Because if it's raining, you just are under the tarp. You can take your clothes, like change your clothes. Yeah. And yeah, it's the best. You the can tarp. build your tent. You can do everything under the tarp. So yeah. Right. Build right. Tents we, we and bring them out when they're dry. Yeah. And we usually put two tarps, like we put a ridge line and then two 10 by 12 tarps, like overlapped on the ridge line. So you end up at, you know, 12 by 20 area. And you can build things in there. You can get everybody under. You can build the, you know, all the tents and send them out. And they're perfectly dry because they're like a totally built tent. Mm -hmm. Well, while yeah, you're but... putting the tarp up and moving the, moving the tents around, it's great to keep the dry suit on. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's 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 comfortable. You're completely dry. You're not getting any of your gear wet. So until you've got the uh, uh, the tent up and all your gear inside to be able to change into, uh, keep the dry suit on. It works great. Yeah, I was just thinking the weight constraints. You know, when you got to fly commercial and then transfer transfer over to a bush plane at some point. Well, the issue with a dry suit, you don't want to go traipsing through the woods collecting wood with it, right? So you don't want to rip it, you know, so you, you got to be, yeah. um, I usually flip to rain gear when I'm in camp. How do people feel about dry suits for, for Northern rivers? Is that, is that required or is that uh, kind of a nice luxury? It's uh, highly recommended. I, uh, I've done uh, four or five Northern trips now. My last one was in Nunavut two years ago and I just found I wore the 
dry suit a lot of the time because there was a super strong wind and single single digit temperatures. So it was just nice to uh, wear. Like I even wore it one day. We had a layover day because the weather was too crappy to uh, yeah. paddle. Yeah, it's it, it, bug proof, right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I already covered except your head and your hands. Yeah, it's interesting. I already heard the two versions. No use dry suit because you walk a lot and you sweat a lot. True. Plus, when you in the rapids, you just parked age. Well, I go up to the Broken Skull this year, and you start right up at the glacial headwaters, and uh, there's a lot of lining, dragging, wading. But then there's portaging in between through, of course, bushes, shrubs, thorns. So it's a real debate, you know, do you go for a wetsuit, which won't tear as easily, uh, but you sure as heck won't be as warm. And my feet get cold and man, that water just kills me. So, and you know, dry socks aren't going to work because the dry socks go up under your knees, but the water is a heck of a lot deeper than your knees. Yeah, we did the... We did the Broken Skull uh, two, three years ago, and I wouldn't do it without a dry suit. I mean, uh, the first three days, daytime temperature was never went above eight. Uh, even when sure is still only about 10 or 12 degrees. So then the air temperature is 30, but the water temperature is pretty cold. So that's when the group sort of split up and this, some people just ditched their dry suits. Some of us didn't, but at the top on the broken skull, I don't think you're going to want not to have a dry suit. I yeah. really don't. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. I think we're well, first uh, for the dry suit repair and maintenance, uh, this was a, it's a small workshop. We're trying to to catch the most important a dry suit repair and to maintain because it's pretty big investment a dry suit. And we just decided to make this small because now the the season is closing and we just decided well now it's time to repair and close all the materials for spring when everything's open. And the dry suit I think it's the most, one of the most important items plus your boat as well, right? I start sharing my screen. Just give me a moment. I'll... Okay, can you guys see my screen with the logo Wilderness Canoe Association? Okay, the first thing I'm going to what's the dry suit components? We have the hood. In general, people never use hood. Typically in the rivers and uh, kayaks and canoe pilots, they avoid to use the hood. But if you're going for an Arctic trip, normally people enjoy the hood because it's very different, the, the environment. We have the neck and the neck rubber gasket. We have the metal zips. We have the overskirt for the kayak. We have the 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 zippers, we have the main fabric in general, it's the, the Gore-Tex we talk about, and the reinforcement pads and the booties. We have different suppliers, different brands in the market. The biggest one we all know it's Cockata. We have level six as well, Solquist as well, level six and Sol it's really it's a material, the Cocota, they use Gore-Tex, level six and Solquist, they use different membranes. I'm going to explain a little bit what's the difference between the Gore-Tex and, and the other membranes and why they are more expensive as well. Okay, Gore-Tex, basically it's a Teflon material with the underlayer pad and next to your face material. It means when you grab a dry suit, when you guys see on my screen, a normal dry suit. Oh, moment. Oh. 
the interior layer is a protection to the cortex from your cell and island. And cortex is really it's a, a Teflon material. And it can the the, the only function of the cortex is to keep the moisture outside and and keep the and leave the, the sweating to breathe to the outside. It's really it's a stopper. It's a water stopper in general. Uh, level six uh, Solquist, they have a different system. It's always the same. You have a membrane protection, you have a membrane in the middle, and you have exterior fabric. Solquist is the same. You have exterior membrane, you have a membrane, you have interior fabric to protect, and you have exterior fabric. It's always the same. Why Gore-Tex is a little bit better? Breeds much better than the other ones. That's the only difference. Okay, if you open your dry suit inside, you see there's some sealing tapes when you are doing the joints, when they are building the, the, guard, the, the dry suit, they apply the dry suit, they seal everything at the end. Then we have the rubber components. So rubber company in general on the dry suits, it's neck gasket and wrist gasket. It's basically, it's latex. It's interesting, I was checking a tutorial online and I saw they are applying the wrong. I, I'll get there, but it was a really interesting material. Uh, latex, you have different suppliers. Uh, you have Kokata, if you want to replace, they have. They have different other brands as well, different size. Kokata, I feel they have a really big problem on the, on the neck caskets. They only have three size. And I can see that as HF. And most of the times when you are repairing your neck casket, you need to go to a different suppliers. Uh, then you have the zippers. You have two zippers. You have a metal zipper or a rubber zipper. In general, I prefer the metal zippers. They are much stronger than the plastic zippers. Okay. The most important we normally do, well, I hope you guys do, whoever dry suits, is to recover your dry suit. We need to wash the dry suit. It's the most important. If it's, if you have, even if you have a, a jacket, a ski jacket, even a tent or something, but I will get there. We need to wash our equipment. Plus the, the, the dry suit. How you destroy the Gore-Tex? Mostly, it's not the stuff, it's your sweating. This is the critical point of the dry, the dry suit. Uh, but I will get there. How many times you should wash the dry suit? Well, in general, I wash my dry suit every five times. It really depends if you, it's in summer. I sweat a lot, me, I sweat a lot in summer. Sometimes I just wash every three times. Or it's really sometimes if you don't sweat a lot, yeah, I can hold more than 10 times. But it really depends how much sweat, uh, how much sweating you have in your body in general. But in general, I, I, I wash every time when I'm going for a long trip. When I come back, I wash. If I'm doing white water on spring, doing all the southern Ontario rivers, I wash. Every six, seven rivers, I wash. Our biggest problem because you also normally have salt, fat, organic material, your body releasing from sweating. How to wash? I, in general, if you see old online tutorials, uh, there's a lot of stuff online. I just figure out the easy and the safest way is on the bathtub with the liquid soap and just put there for half an hour, just soaking. Uh, and then rise and wait for to dry. Uh, just avoid, you can wash the dry suit or any Gore-Tex in a, a washing machine. Try to avoid the top load because the top load machine inside have the drumble in, in the center. 
and because the dry cells, the dry cells normally be pretty big, and they get their spinning around for nothing. Yeah. Okay, phase two, the most important on a dry suit. It's the coatings. You have a, you have the, the dry suit, you have more or less three layers. You have the external fabric, we have the Gore-Tex in the middle, and you have the membrane protection on the interior side. Most of the people think 85%, what is the impermeable? It's the Gore-Tex. No, the Gore-Tex is not the, the, uh, the waterproof material. It's the exterior. It's the durable water repellent. When they build the, 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 the Gore-Tex material, Kokata, yes. Yes. Yes, JC. Uh, when you when you grab your dry suit, you have the Gore-Tex, you have the exterior fabric, and you have the interior fabric. When you have the exterior fabric, they on on the factory they apply uh, they apply like a. Oh, a coating on the exterior for and hot. Oh, maybe I have a question. You guys can talk anytime, just unmute and I'm okay. There's a question front load if, gentle cycle. Yes, you can go front load. I the only problem I don't like the washing machine because it's all the components inside it's metal and plus you have the rubber gasket. I just feel it's safer on the top. That's yeah. my only reason. And wash. Yeah. It's... Now, you mentioned some chemical and it, and it cut out. You said something about salt. What chemical or cleaning fluid do you use? Yes. When you are sweat, yeah. When you are, when you are sweating, you, your body is releasing fat and salt. And that is the biggest problem for the Gore-Tex. They don't like salt and fat. They don't like anything organic. But most of the people think, oh, my Gore-Tex, it's getting wet, everything it's inside. It, it doesn't work. It's not the, it's not the Gore-Tex problem. It's the outside fabric. When, when the, on the factory, Kokotel, well, the, the Gore-Tex fibers, when they produce the, the membrane, they apply a coat on the exterior fabric. When you grab the exterior fabric, this yellow, when they are doing the fabric, they apply the coating on the factory. And that is the problem when you see people on the rivers on paddling, they get wet and you fear coating. That is the gold rule you guys need to apply every year or every two years. I will get there. Okay. Basically, well, what's the durable water replant? That's the most important. It's really, it's a coating they apply on the exterior layer. When it's the time to apply it, it's when you are in the river or you are paddling and you put your hands on the Gore-Tex and you feel wet. And you feel, you feel like chill and cold and you feel it's absorbing water. That's when you see, okay, I need to apply again durable water replant. And if you apply your Gore-Tex, your dry suit will be new again. I can guarantee you. Okay, how to apply the water repellent? Because you apply in dry, the product it doesn't adhere to the Gore-Tex. You need because if it's wet, the penetration will be much better. On the, on the exterior layer. Ensure just pass a little bit uh, cold water on the Gore-Tex, make sure it's a little bit wet. And then you can apply like a Nikwex. It's a really, really good product. And you just spray around the, the, the dry suit and just wait to get dry and you are done and ready. This system is the same for tents, same for boots. Normally the tents, when people say, oh, my tent is getting very wet. Yeah, it's losing the exterior coating. We need to apply again a water repellent, another layer on top. It's the same as the, the dry suit. The exterior layer is losing 
the durable water repellent. You need to apply another coat. Unfortunately, every two or three years, new layer. Okay, holes, repairs, punch, you know, everything. In general, there's two options. On the river, you can apply Gorilla Tape. It's the fastest way. Or you can apply Tier 8 or Aqua Seal. I like to use both because you can apply a little bit Aqua Seal. The only problem with the Aqua Seal, it's a little bit messy to apply because the brush is not very clean. It doesn't, sometimes you apply, it doesn't look very good. I normally apply a little bit of seal and then I, I use tier eight to finish the product on top. It's like a layer on top of the tier eight and you are sealed and that punch will be sealed for the rest of your life. Yeah, I can attest to aqua seal. I had some uh, neoprene gloves that self-destructed. So you just imagine all the fingers falling apart and every night I would aqua seal it. And at the end it looked gross but it was bulletproof. It really seals neoprene well together. I fixed yeah. airbags on canoes and I fixed Gore-Tex dry suits too. That little yeah. thing cost about nine bucks, nine, nine, 10 bucks. But I always have it in my repair kit because it's a yeah. real lifesaver. You could fix your air mattress, your airbags, your dry suit, um, you know, anything that you need to glue that's kind of, and, and the beauty of it, it stays flexible when it glues. Exactly. So it flexes with your hands, gloves, whatever. So it's, it's excellent stuff. I, I've never yeah. done it with a brush. I just use the tube itself. I it Seems okay. Honestly, I don't use the brush. I start to use the toothpick. Yeah. But it's very thin. And at the end, I apply a tier eight if it's required. Right, and it's clear when it dries. But solid, yeah. But just remember, this workshop it's more. It's this is advice for field repairs, not if you want to go for a professional home, a store. Well, sometimes they have different techniques, but it's more field repair. Yeah. So what I've done in the past when I had a rip, I put the grill tape on the inside, so it keeps the two pieces together. I lay yeah. flat and level. I put the aqua seal, and by the morning, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Another thing normally you have on your dry suit is the seal, the <laughs> the seam seal. If you get inside on dry suits, you see like a tape. There it is. It's more in Gore-Tex, like climbing jackets, a lot of stuff. Tents, they normally try to rip off. On dry suits, it's pretty rare, but it's pretty easy to repair. You can buy something on Amazon, a tape and an iron, and just seal again all the seams. And it's cheap. Well, if you buy a small roll. Uh, Okay, rubber gaskets. That's again very tricky. Okay, most of the problems rubber gaskets they start getting very dry and they start getting start to open small cracks. And the main reason is because it's the sunscreen and the insect repellent. They always have like very harmful products inside and they just really destroyed all the the latex. That will and just avoid a little bit, getting a little bit fading and and you'll avoid cracking because it's the ultraviolet coating. And most of the people ask the people, how many times should apply? You, and don't, you don't want to apply more than three times a year. Three or four times a year, that's enough. If you want to apply every month, that's too much for the latex. It'll be soak. Okay, that's another one. <laughs> Please remind this is for field repair. It's not a professional store repair. And that's something I tested and it works. 
unfortunately, uh, 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 or it happens a lot of people, it's uh, just broke, or you risk just broke as well, risk casket is broke, and how to repair. Okay, the first thing, the easy one, it's Gorilla Tape. I already repaired a lot of neck caskets with Gorilla Tape. It's super strong, it'll bond, and you can finish your trip without any problem. Um, the only problem is that the grill tape is to apply the inside the gasket. It's not very comfortable, but if you want to replace a neck a neck gasket on a trip, I don't feel it's the most comfortable because a neck a neck gasket on a trip, it's hard after the next days because it's so tight, it just feels so uncomfortable for the rest of your trip. And maybe I prefer to keep a grill tape than replace a neck gasket. You guys always can try first, you're going to replace the neck cask, but please remind on the next days, you know, your blood circulation is really, it's not, it's miserable using a new uh, neck, neck casket. Okay, the first thing, when you are replacing the neck casket on the field, you need to cut the, let me see, I fall, okay, I cannot. You, you need to keep the original rubber gasket. You just trim very close to the Gore-Tex. Okay, let me see just to the comment. Don't get aqua seal on your skin. Reduce the rubber. I agree. No, don't get aqua seal. You just trim all the rubber very close to the Gore-Tex and just keep the... You always need to keep at least one in more or less one and a quarter the all the all the way around and then you have a very clean area because you're going to apply aqua seal on this area clear okay the second one it's find the a kitchen pot in our campsite is always kitchen pots. If you have nine to 10 inch, that's the typical size for a large neck, medium, even medium to large neck casket. Uh, and yeah, just squeeze the, your neck casket on the, uh, just squeeze the dry suit on the pot. <coughs> Change the time. Okay. Okay. Apply aqua seal on the older neck casket, and then you just fold the new one on top. And then, well, you can, if you have clothes pegs, you can use the clothes pegs or elastic band, or you can use strap and just keep everything tap. Okay. How much Normally aqua that seal do you need? Uh, I just put a, a small layer with a knife. Just a small, really small layer around with a knife. It's enough. The brown aqua seal takes more or less 10 hours to cure on summer. Mm -hmm. I imagine if you are doing a really big northern trip, the, the, well, the temperature will be much lower. And you need to use another product. I'll show you now. Okay, if we use Koto, this instead of using aqua seal, it takes only two, two or three hours to dry. And it's pretty good, it's pretty fast. Well, it's, I normally like to use only aqua, I only bring, in general, I never bring Koto in my trips, I only use aqua seal because I can repair more stuff. Yeah. And in general, we normally fish our trips around five, six in the afternoon until next day. I think normally it's pretty easy. Normally it's dry during the night. Tracy, is it work? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's very, honestly, I feel it's very easy to replace neck caskets or wrist 
gaskets. It's, I know we are replacing one hour. It's that you bought all that stuff from Cocota. Honestly, you can do that stuff please, and there's no problems. It's very easy to repair. Okay, let me change. Uh, there's a question about Kotol just Coquiline. If you look at the comments there. What's the chat. question? The question is from Neil in the chat. Okay, let me see. Because I'm in presenting mode, I can't read the. Is Kotol just Toluene? Sorry? Can you repeat, please? Okay, let me see. Okay. Yeah, I think you could drag it up from the base of your presentation. Okay, let me see the chat. Oh, Just we got no. Yeah, is Kotal cut away Halloween or something? Yes, I will just cut away the old parts of the neck and continue to glow over the rest. I just cut away the old parts and continue the gasket. Sorry, no Mick. Okay, let's go back. I just want to go back and make sure we are on the same page. Yes, Andrew, that, that question was about um, uh, if, the, if the old gasket has, has separated from the, from the dry suit, such that you don't have any rubber to be able to use to put aqua steel on to be able to install the new one. Uh, how do you, how do you seal the, uh, the the new gasket to, to the dry suit? Do you just use aqua steel exactly the same way, or do you have to treat it differently? Exactly the same way. You never cut you never cut the old gasket. You need to leave. A a, a small uh, in my in my case the, uh, the 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 rubber has actually pulled off from the from the uh, from the from the from the vortex or whatever material oh, really? to. so like the, the, the glue the, the glue is dried to come off it's an older it's an older suit that I got used yeah unfortunately I don't know how to resolve well, I always leave because in general I have the old you can use aqua seal but you know because on your case you really need to use aqua seal on top of the the guard takes, but for yeah. people still have the 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 rubber, you need to keep at least one inch, more or less one and a half inch of the older gasket. Yeah, but I know I fixed dry suits with Aqua Seal from the inside, from the outside, so it will stick to it. It will stick. I this is tested in one rubber with aqua seal. It's seal, it's bomb proof. Yeah, you are going to anywhere. But you always the best you always need to leave this rubber a little bit, one and a half inch. So Sandro, yes well I well I've got you here. I don't know if you can see me on the video. I've got I've got my coquetat suit here and you can see all the holes. Let um me see. See, now I'm I'm thinking I would keep this 25 30 mil. Can you I can see the I you are not showing let me see you are not showing your okay now That's I can better. see Oh there we go. Yes. So here's my neck gasket. Yeah. So I would keep this 25 25 30 mils of the old gas maybe have 5 or 6 mils showing. Yes, As a, you always need to keep that rubber. It's, you need to cut very close to the guard text, but you always need to keep a band, even two inches of reference, one and a quarter, one and a half, because the, the new one needs to glue on top of the older one. Right. And and I found like this neck gasket, I, um, I'm surprised, I lose circulation in my head. <laughs> so, um, I know I have a thick neck, but I... I don't think I have that thick of a neck. <laughs> <laughs> you have two options. You put in a you put a, to, uh, a pot for ten days, fifteen days, and yeah. just lease. Yeah, just keep. I normally my gas when I replace. I, the first round is like ten days. I wait ten days, then I try again. Oh, it's not enough. All right, I wait more two or three days. I'll check again. Right. Oh, okay. 
and then you can I I cut my neck cast okay adapt a little bit because on the rings inside yeah, I can see those rings right inside, there yeah, yeah you can cut and adjust a little bit to your neck uh, if you feel where do you buy these neck gaskets uh mec mac online it's i think it's everywhere okay yeah hey rob oh yeah you have um yeah you're going to you unfortunately you are in, you are in mute you need to unmute Sure about that. Yeah, the, the the gaskets pulled completely off the off the uh, uh, the outside fabric. Wow. So this is this is where where, where it was before. It's come right off there. Uh, that, that that glue is just too old, I guess. And yeah. finally, that was the old Aqua Seal. That was the gaskets aqua good. You just Aqua Seal. Oh. You have an extra gasket, the older one. Uh, no, but I'm sure I can find one. No, but Rob, I was your just make a still test. good? A small area. I think so. Yeah, okay, so I, don't, I don't see any tears in the gasket. On. Yeah, just use Aqua Seal and stick it back on. Okay. And, you know, yeah. put something there that you could push it together, right? Like a, some kind of clamping device. Yeah. It, it's you want to just work. try a little I mean, bit in a small area. Aqua Seal works. It's, it's like yep. Sandro says, bomb proof. You know, as long it's as bomb proof, yeah, push it together. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm actually thinking if it gave up here, then chances are it's going to give up all the rest of the way around. So I'm tempted to just yeah. take the whole thing off and then, 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 uh, then uh, clean it, clean off as much of the old glue as I possibly can, and then just re seal and put the entire thing on fresh. Yeah, yeah I'll I wonder lose, if, yeah. I'm to, if I'm going to, you might want to do pieces like because you can't do the whole thing simultaneously. Doing that, should I, should I get a new gasket? Yeah. I'll just put a pot, try to put a, a big pot and just aqua seal and bond again. Okay. Thanks. Hey, hey, Sandro, can I step in with a little bit of advice on these glues? Yeah. Um, I had a fair amount of experience this summer with various types of these glues on plastic boats and on rubber and stuff and had some mixed results. Um, my experience from it would be that theoretically, if the aqua seal has been allowed to dry or any kind of glue, sticking a new layer of glue to an old layer of glue doesn't, doesn't always work. That's why the things got separated on that clean of the old glues whip on a brand new layer of, of uh, aqua seal and then get your gasket pressed on tight so that now it's new layer of, of aqua seal against clean layers. And they're not trying yeah. to stick to old glue, which you know nothing about and might fail on you at some point. I, I agree with Andy. It makes sense. Maybe, you, Andy, uh, I, I don't know, if you can stand a little bit, just clean with alcohol yeah. very well. Yeah, um, I was, uh, I, I was, I was, I was going to add, I, I, I agree completely with that. Um, um, I could clean with alcohol. Alcohol will not remove the, uh, the, the old aqua steel. It'll, it'll, it'll give us a clean surface, it'll, but, it, but it won't remove it. Uh, I've, I've tried, I've tried, I have it on my hands before, and I've tried. Uh, Acetone, alcohol, toluene, pentane, yeah, nothing you're works. Gonna, you're going to give yourself cancer trying to get that stuff off. It. It's not <laughs> Yeah, I know. So I'm kind of wondering yeah. if there's if there's something that's recommended for this. Did, I think we, I think we should send an email to Kokota. Maybe they have a different uh, experience. I'm pretty sure they know someone already have that okay. problem. Because that is really If I find strange. out, I'll, I'll, I'll share it in the chat at some point. Yeah, yeah, share with us because we want to include as well in the workshop. Yeah. Okay, let me keep going. Uh, it's a little bit slow. 
Okay. Yeah. Kotal will be really two hours to dry. It's pretty strong. <clears throat> Deeper, it's a big problem. <laughs> Try to avoid uh, any problem in your zipper because on the dry suits, it's really hard to replace zippers or it's almost impossible. The only one to keep your zipper, you just want to put bee wax or zipper lubricant because replacing a zipper, it's almost you need to send to Kokata, unfortunately. Yeah. I was I, I was checking I was talking with a guy, he replaced a dry suit zipper, but he told me that after eight months, yeah, I start peeling a little bit. It was not one hundred percent waterproof, unfortunately. Yeah, zipper is really expensive repair. I didn't find any more options on the market. You really need to be very careful and try to keep zippers very clean, fancy brands, zipper cleaning, be wax, perfume, it's enough. Just keep that zippers running lubricate. Uh, I think it's everything. Um, I got to say one thing, the plastic zippers are a lot easier to use. My old brass metal ones were like, oh man, you needed to be a, you know, you needed help basically to get it around your shoulder. Plastic, plastic zippers, they are faster, easy to repair, but they are more fragile. Yeah, yeah. That's sure. the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this workshop. I'm open for any questions. Do you want to go I, I, in regular mode, screen mode? Yeah. I can see you can go. questions. Yeah. Go back to Neil's uh, question. He had a question. If you look at the chat, um, Neil Fitzpatrick, who doesn't have a um, okay, mic, he says, is Kotal just to totaline? I don't know what those are, but I don't know. I, I just, I just Kotal. It's okay, Kotal so we don't know what the trade. I don't know. Maybe it's another product. Okay. I don't know. It's okay. I'll um, check. Let's see, there's, there's another one. one. It's a solvent as inactive as a component for Aquasil. Okay. Okay, good to know. There's one thing I can offer is uh, if you don't want to do it yourself, there's a guy in the Cambridge area that I've used twice now. His name is Jamie Dor Doris or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I Jamie do have his website here. Sport. Yeah, Paddle Sport Repair. It's really And um, yeah. I had already two repairs there and they were pretty good. In fact, the yeah, he the, repairs boats, dry suits, everything. Yeah, yeah. In Gary, fact, could you put the, the link in the uh, or, 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 the original? Uh, Gary, could you put a link or the guy's name uh, in the chat? Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, Sandro, can you pull up the website? It's called Paddle Sports. Yeah. Um, now, one other thing I wanted to add is there are I, different sizes of necks. Um. One of the ladies that wanted to use my wife's suit, she has a very small neck, so I lent her the suit, but my wife's suit, there was a gap. So I said, well, you can get a new neck on, and then when you give it back, the suit to me, I'll just cut it for my wife. And that's what she did. She got a smaller neck gasket. Yeah. I uh, let me see. And it's called Paddle Sports. Okay, I just post the link. Yeah, Paddle Sports Repairs is from Cambridge. Uh, okay. I know he do a lot of work for the paddling community. He repairs boats, repairs paddle, repairs dry suits. He repairs everything. It's really, and it's really very, it's really good professional. I've I've used him too. Uh, he replaced all the gaskets on my dry suit and uh, a few pinhole leaks. And yeah, he did an outstanding job. Yeah. So the prices were 62 bucks for the neck, 68 bucks for feet, and 45 bucks for the wrist bands. 
So for like a hundred bucks, typically you get your neck and your, your wristbands. And then there's like a $25 charge for a pressure check and maybe a $20 charge if you want it cleaned. So at the end of the day, it's maybe 150 bucks or less and you got a whole new set of gaskets and you're good for another four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, just for just for as a point of comparison, I I I I, I contacted a, a dry suit repair place that that, that that specialized in scuba diving stuff, and uh, they quoted me 165 bucks to replace a neck gasket. So wow. stay stay away from the scuba places. There, it's, it's just Robert, outrageous. Robert, I can make for 100 if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only uh, need one hour, and I replace. So. <laughs> I, I talked to uh, I talked to Jamie a while ago. Um, nice chap. He's actually uh, a local to where I grew up. Um, and he mentioned with zippers um, that he used to replace them, but uh, uh, prices have doubled since he started replacing zippers. Oh. That's something interesting and. Wow, it's capitalism, basically. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want. They want. It's a lot of labor as well. Another, it's, labor. Uh, it's intense labor. It's not an easy repair. Uh, one question. I I just got this. I used to always um, put my clothing in a dry sack, and then if I had an upset, well, then I'd do a quick dash <laughs> to the site and get change. Um, but um, but I got I I. Being on the WCA site this year, everybody's wearing these dry suits. So I, I picked one up um, there the other day, and I put it on a couple times. And what is dry suit etiquette? Like when everybody gets to the campsite, do, do you unzip your? Because <laughs> I find it's almost impossible to get it. When you are piling for on the water in summer, really in August, and you see people piling with their dry suit, right? Because you spend a lot of time in the water. Uh, I almost I use all season. If I'm going to the river, if I'm going for lakes, I don't use. Or if you're going like shoulder, like now, like October, November, you need to use a dry suit. Imagine if you are crossing a lake, mm -hmm. you need to keep the, yeah. the dry suit because the water is so cold. When you are doing rivers. You need to use a dry suit all the time because the water is very cold. When you get the campsite, if it's like fall, yeah, use the dry suit at least, you know, setting up your campsite, your tent, uh, grab the, prepare all the tarp, and at the end, you take the dry suit. Yeah. On summer, yeah, after like yeah. August. And after 10 minutes, what about wetsuits? Huh? Cheap. And the only problem I see with the, dry, the wetsuits on the next day, they are really wet. <laughs> it's not comfortable. Yeah. You yeah. Should draw Honestly, when you, yeah. when you start piling with a dry suit, everything is going to change because you're going to feel much safer. Believe me. Yeah. And much more comfortable. You're going to feel dry. All the time, even if you tip the boat, you flip the boat in a, in a rapid, you just swim to shore and you are all dry. You are ready to go. You don't need to change clothes. And you still feel, you still are warm all the time. All the time yeah. warm. Yeah. Yeah, I would say a couple, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially in the fall, you have to make sure you have the right base layer, uh, like fleece or whatever you're going to wear. And don't overdress. You have to kind of figure out with your own body because you don't want to start sweating and also you don't want to be cold. So you have to get the right combination of fleece or underwears and whatever. Uh, one of the things is an advantage is a dry suit will always capture some water. So if you upset, you're going to float higher. So as long as you don't keep sticking your head up, you're going to go right over rocks that other people will hit. So that's a big advantage too. Yeah. You yeah. You have a bigger flotation. Yeah. I normally, when I'm paddling, like summer, all the season, I normally paddle only with first layer, like a really thin wool layer. And if I know it's going to be cold or it's going to rain, I have them like a polar tech on top, just on the, on the top. 
I don't use any, almost anything on the on the paints. Just a first layer. On on the on my feet, I will talk very thin. I will first I pull some place when you are on the rivers. You just feel when you are walking, a lot of dirt is going inside your shoes and that punch your booty, your Gore-Tex dry suit. Yeah. That's why I always put what, a little... Yeah, you need to be very careful with that stuff. You need to buy, that's my opinion, you need to buy like a, a neoprene sock to put on top yeah. and then you, you put your shoes. Yeah. So this is really oh. Gore-Tex, it's really fragile. And you are walk on the lakes, rivers, it's a lot of always dirt inside your shoes and you're going to punch the dead Gore-Tex. You don't want to punch, you want to yeah. protect. So my recommendation is you wear socks, you go, you put your foot in the booty of the thing and then you put a quarter inch neoprene or whatever, two, three millimeters neoprene sock and then whatever your footwear is. So all the dirt will stay outside the neoprene yeah. and protect your booty. And even when you're stripping up, you should stand up yes, and yes. you're stripping down on some kind of map that you're not standing on gravel or sand. You're right. Yeah, it just remember at the end, if you are using, flat. I normally, I use size 12 in shoes. When I'm using dry suit, I need to go one more because you are putting yeah. a lot of volume on the shoes. Yeah. But it, but it will keep your foot warm. It yeah. the suit. Uh, I just sold a suit to Yuri. It's about a five, six-year-old suit. And when I water checked it, I poured water on the inside and see if anything yeah. came out the outside. And the feet were perfect. And that's the wow. most important thing, the feet, because when you're always in the water because your feet are dragging in the canoe and in the water because there's water in the canoe, that's where you'll feel the cold if the water starts coming in. Now, sometimes you feel cold and you say, yeah, I think my feet are leaking. But when you take off your suit, your socks are bone dry. It's just the cold of the water coming through. So neoprene socks do help that. Yes. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll also want really to throw, I, I also throw to the suggestion you talked talking about the, the water repellent coating and the, and the, and the socks and stuff. Um, I, have, I have a Kokotat suit. And I have a small leak uh, at the base of one of the zippers. Um, I sent it into Kokotat for, for, for evaluation and repair. I think they, they charged like 35 bucks for shipping. And when they got it, they evaluated it. They didn't actually find the problem with the zipper for some reason, but they said that they uh, fixed a few small holes uh, in the butt and in the, uh, in, the, in, in, in the feet and a few other areas. And they completely refreshed uh, uh, the coating and stuff, all that for free. It's, it's, a, it's a lifetime warranty by Coca. If you say, send it in, all you just pay for shipping, and uh, they'll, they'll they'll refresh it. Yeah, you, you if you apply the exterior coating, the WRR, you, your dry suit will be new almost. It's a big difference. Well, in your case, Chris, you don't need because it's a brand new. But in general, after three or four years, if you paddle a lot, you spend a lot of time in the water, you need to recoat the Gore-Tex. It's the same with tents. You see a lot of old tents start to lose. Oh, my tent, is, it's leaking. Well, it's not, it's not the fabric, it's because it's the fabric is losing, it's losing the, the coating. You need to apply another coating and you have a tent for 10 years again. It's the same with the Gore-Tex, right? So it's, you need to apply, because the Gore-Tex, it's only for to stop the water going inside. But that roof, on my view, it's the yellow, the outside exterior. You need to apply another coat on top. You feel right away when you are piling and you feel always all the time your dry suit very wet, not dry. And even the color, it's not like yellow, it's like a, a very dark color. You see right away, it's losing the coating. You need to apply it right away again. It's always, you feel like always all the time wet. It's really a strange feeling. And because the exterior fabric, it's all wet. You need to apply a new coat. It's like seal right away. It's brand new suit after. 
Uh, let me say it depends what have you went. Hopefully, a base lane. Okay, it says someone's stripping right down to chain just over the horizon, giving that space. To... Yeah, basically, you're not naked in the suit. You have a base layer, you know, because you don't want yeah. your 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 body oils against the suit. So, if anything, yeah. you go into your underwear or whatever you're wearing, yeah. shirt. And most oils will go into you, in those fabrics, and then whatever yeah. gets into the Gore-Tex. Uh, yeah, if you wear things bare naked. You're gonna have more oils and sweats in your suit for sure. Yeah, your sweat it's the biggest problem on the Gore-Tex. You really need to keep clean, wash when you feel it's necessary. I normally wash every five six times, or like a big trip on 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 some or fall. I feel I sweat a lot. I wash. You know, Sandra, you have a real trick, a secret, actually. You make sure you wipe out every event. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets super clean. Yes. <laughs> and in class four rapids, you get the hey. tumble effect. Sandro. <laughs> hey, Sandro. Oh. Yes. Bring me up as a speaker so people can see me. Yeah. Are you guys? Yeah, able to we see can me? see. Yeah. Well, I okay, think I'm going to show individuals you select that. Yeah, we can. Like I know, but I'm going to show you something. Okay. Can, yeah, can we you can guys see. see this? Yeah. Okay. This thing is called a, uh, let me just look it up. It's like a Snuggie. It is a Snuggie. So what I did is on the back of it, I sewed a fleece blanket. So okay. now this thing is, is a big tent. So you throw this thing over your head, over your dry suit, and now you can strip inside the thing. In public. Because this guy is body. Um, there are stores that sell those things. I'm not sure where, but I saw somebody on the river really? with one of these things. And as soon as I saw it, I said, you know what? I'm gonna make one of those. It cost me, cost uh, me about fifty yeah, bucks wow. to make. It's... Now I can basically yeah. strip anywhere and not be. Yeah, I think in my trips, it. everyone is very polite so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I know, but I'm just saying, two fleece yeah. blankets sewed together like that with a hole in it gives you a big snuggie that yeah. you can change your clothes in. Yeah, that's a good idea as well. Okay. It's really cool. Thank you for sharing. Well, you guys have any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just, just let me know. Next week, I'm going to do a, another workshop about navigation. It's, there was a question about PowerPoint slides. It's very I could say is this is interesting a workshop if you guys keep since. And we're going to post it on YouTube, WCA YouTube, in about a week's time. So if you missed anything, you can always go back and hear what the questions were and see the presentation again. Um, Matt's at work and there's about 10 videos on YouTube right now and we're planning to add to that with these little presentations and stuff. So it's kind of like... Okay, there's a, qu <clears throat> okay, there's a question about the socks. Okay, okay yep. I'm going to repeat my technique for the socks. I normally use this very thin wool sock and then I I, I I put my dry suit and then I put again a neoprene a neoprene sock but the neoprene sock needs to be very thin like 0 0.5 or one millimeter it's enough and just to avoid because use a lot of that dirt is going inside your on the Gore-Tex booty Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone rinse, rinse only? I'm going to throw out a couple comments about an invoice I got from Jamie Doors a couple of years ago. I, three years ago, I sent him four dry suits to work on at Paddle Sports Repairs. Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments he put on the invoice, there was a problem with the top two inches of the zipper. So rather than replace the zipper, he just sewed it shut and permanently sealed that part of the zipper because it was 
basically broken. We didn't want to replace the zipper. He charged me a nominal $10 for that little MacGyver move on, on the zipper. So there's always options. If, uh, um, but for those four dry suits together, it cost me $375 plus the taxes and the shipping, which was pretty darn good yeah. for all the, the gaskets and the, everything that he did to the zip, to the suits. Yeah. Uh, when I had my suit done, the original one, I got the gasket material back and I found it was better than the original manufacturer. It just felt better. It fit better. It lasted a long time. Uh, so whatever product he's buying, it seems to be high quality. Yeah, I agree. He's really good. Uh, and, uh, you, uh, Sandro, can you talk a little bit about the rings and where to cut? Or maybe show the rings and what yeah. kind of the, okay, I'll try know, goes up. bigger and smaller. Uh, you know, the, see. So that the big portion is... You know, next to the cut. Oh, my camera's on the bottom. Yeah, there's some rings. Let me see if I can stretch inside on the neck casket. I don't know if you guys can see. I think there's not enough lighting. You might have uh, to go to speaker. Yeah, view there's to some see rings more. in. Everybody okay, can still select speaker view and you'll zoom into Sandro. There you go. That's better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good, Sandro. There's some rings on the internal side here because some people have long necks, short legs, and you can cut these rings with a sharp knife if you guys want. And just always cut above the ring and never be is the strongest part of the ring it's that's why we always cut above the ring and never below and this will avoid oh. open okay uh-huh yeah so you're yeah see like these you rings. got a beefed up yeah. section so it won't tend to rip and yeah they also when you normally cutting, i cut one i try i normally cut one i try i don't like i cut again but yeah. always above the the ring that rubber because it's a thicker one and you cut and you are protected it's not open right uh, it's it's uh, the, 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 those rings it, it, it's not only it's not only has to do with the length of your neck but also as you go from the top down towards towards where it's attached to the suit the rings are are bigger around so yeah. the, so, so the more you cut the, you're basically cutting off the, the amount to adjust The size of the thing to your to the width of your neck. Yeah, the go slowly, and well, you guys need to adjust. A lot of people they don't cut. A lot of people just prefer to keep. I normally I put my next cast for ten days in a pot, then I'll try, and then I start cutting the rings. Because you don't want to go to the river with a new brand dry suit because it's really a pain <laughs> in the ass spend like yeah. five to ten days in a in a new dry suit with new caskets yeah it'd be yeah it, it's it's very tight sometimes yeah yeah it's very <laughs> tight yeah. you don't enjoy anything <laughs> <laughs> so one important fact when you cut try to be very continuous don't make like a little notch because that notch is a stress point and that's where it's going to rip so you, you have to cut and be very deliberate and yeah. continuous. You can't have like you cut with, a, with you know, so it's got to be like, you a, know, that shave, yeah. you know, that small shaving blades, the old classical times, they cut really small blades. That is the perfect ones. Yeah. Exacto knife or something. Yeah. Yeah. You need yeah. something that's very okay. consistent cut with smoothness. No, no, yeah. is there anything in it? Yeah. Because the notches will yeah. stress it, and that will where it's going to rip. Yeah, and don't be afraid to put the pot for five days. Go to the days. next ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put the pot for five days, try it, and then go again. And yeah. until and, and and pick a pot that doesn't overstretch it too. Yeah. 
So progressively try a pot. If it doesn't work, try a bigger pot, but don't over yeah. Now you have, it's too big. Yeah, don't go for... A 15 liters pot. Just go for a smaller one.